This burst came from a galaxy thought to have some incredibly dense neutron stars in binary pairs that orbit each other. And scientists believe that the only way to generate such a quick and powerful burst of gamma rays is if two neutron stars engage in a deadly dance, orbiting closer and closer, then finally crashing into each other. This is thought to be the moment when a black hole is born. When the two neutron stars finally touch, one of the neutron stars gets shredded into a disk, and the thing that's left is too big to be a neutron star. There's no force in the universe that can hold up two neutron stars, so it collapses to a black hole. The 2005 event, known as GRB 050509b, since it was the second burst to occur on May 9th of that year, was the first short gamma ray burst whose location was pinned down. It didn't look very bright from Earth, but that's because it was an astounding 2.2 billion light years away. GRB 0509b lasted only about 40 milliseconds, but in that time, it released about as much energy as the sun will release in 100 million years. But the power of colliding stars can't compete with the even larger amount of energy released when an entire star explodes from the inside out. Number three, supernovas. When large stars die, they don't just fizzle out like our sun eventually will. They go out with a bang. There are actually several types, but the two main ways a supernova explosion happens is either when one star in a binary star system swallows part or all of its companion, or when a supermassive star collapses in on itself and ejects its outer shell in the process. Either way, a mind-boggling amount of energy is quickly released. The energy of motion, the kinetic energy of the ejected material can equal the total amount of energy that the sun will release over its entire 10 billion year lifetime. The binary star type of supernova is similar to a hydrogen bomb where runaway nuclear fusion leads to a massive explosion. These are known as Type 1A supernovas, and in 2003, one of these blasts flooded the cosmos with more light than an entire galaxy of stars combined. It was over 20 billion times more luminous than the sun for about two weeks, and uh, this all came from the explosion of something not much bigger than the moon, about 1.4 times the mass of the sun, from a thermonuclear explosion, from fusion. For the core collapse type of supernova, an incredible amount of power is generated when the outer shell slams down and gets an extra kick from the denser core of the star. Imagine this ping pong ball represents that outer, lighter material of the star, whereas this super ball represents the heavy inner core. You can see that the ping pong ball actually it doesn't really bounce that much on its own. And there's the bounce of the Super Bowl. But what you'll see is that when I send them down together, the bounce of the Super Bowl back up will propel the ping pong ball much higher. And that's very much like what happens in the supernova, where you have the heavy inner core bouncing back out and meeting that lighter material and blowing it out. In fact, one supernova explosion in 2005, known as SN 2005 AP, flashed brighter than all of the others for weeks on end. But it didn't do any damage to Earth because, luckily, it was also 4.7 billion light-years away. 
And like many of the other blasts on the top 10 list, supernovas don't just destroy. A supernova is a little bit like a recycling center. There's a lot of material in those massive stars. It's anything from eight times to over a hundred times the mass of our sun. So there's a lot of material that's going to be processed in those stars, just like there's a lot of raw material here at the recycling center that's going to be processed. The matter in the universe is dominated by light elements like hydrogen and helium. But the inside of a star about to go supernova is the main source of the various metals and other heavy elements we depend on for life. Just like these materials are being sorted into different categories, the star starts to process heavier and heavier elements, starting with hydrogen, then helium, making heavier and heavier elements all the way up to iron when the fusion process stops. Later on in its life, when it becomes supernova, with the aid of the compression effects in the supernova, the star will make even heavier elements. Just as these materials are now packaged and processed and ready to leave the recycling center and go out into the world to be reused, the materials that were made in those stars that were then finally cooked and blown out into the universe by the supernova process, those will be reused as well. They may be used in other stars or perhaps other planets. The materials that we're made of here on Earth, the materials even in our bodies, those heavy elements were made in supernovae. While supernovas are massive explosions themselves, they can also trigger secondary blasts with even more concentrated energy. Number two, long gamma ray bursts. The long gamma ray burst comes out of the most powerful supernova explosions. They're as strong as the short gamma ray bursts, but since they last much longer, anywhere from two seconds to nearly half an hour, they blast out much more energy overall. The long gamma ray bursts are completely different beasts compared to the short gamma ray bursts. They're immensely more powerful, maybe up to about 10,000 times more powerful than the short duration bursts. These concentrated jets of energy only come from supernova explosions involving stars 30 or more times the mass of our sun. And just like the short gamma ray bursts, they're evidence of the birth of a black hole. Long gamma ray bursts are, in some sense, a variety of hyper-energetic supernova. The iron core collapses as before to a neutron star, but too much material falls down on it and it can't stay a neutron star. The temperature rises to 10 billion degrees. The luminosity in one cubic inch of this is as big as the sun. And this power can't flow out in the equator. It gets focused like in a shotgun blast out the rotational axis of the star. So how much energy do the most powerful long gamma ray bursts release compared to our sun? The answer is shocking. <laughs> 